Sutcliffe. He's won 13, lost 14, will be the pitcher. Dunn has won seven, lost 11. Ed Montague, the plate umpire. Steve Ripley at first. Fred Bratlander at second. And John McSherry at third. Well, what an exciting day. It reminds me of a year ago when the president called. My first day back, much to my surprise. And Bobby Dernier kind of cut short the interview by beating out a bunt on the first pitch. Well, now, Could he have gone to three and two? Now, Harry, you'll have a chance to spend a lot more time with him up here. And there go the press corps, which means that the president shouldn't be too far behind them. They'll set up right up here behind us. And he'll have a chance to call a little baseball with Harry and I, which is going to be quite an experience. As Rick Sutcliffe goes to the mound for his 32nd start of the year, 7-9 lifetime against the Pirates. You know, Bob Michael, who's out of Peoria, the co great congressman, uh, has told us many times about chatting with the president, and invariably, he will do takeoffs on how they used to have to do ball games when they do them by Western Union report. I'm familiar with that because we did that with the St. Louis Cardinals, Gabby Street and I the first couple of years. And he tells a lot of funny stories of how Billy Jurgis played with the Cubs then. And he'd have Jurgis foul off about four or five pitches. He'd have an argument break out between the player. Anything to take up a little time. Look at the, hey. <laughs> how you doing, fellas? How are you? You shouldn't have come out here to take my picture. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen more people up here. I wish the president. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. And he fouls it out of play. Gary Reeder hitting 140. Two homers. Four RBI. Joe Corneo has a score sheet already for President Reagan. When he sits down, he's going to be up to date on exactly what's happening in the game. Well, I hope he can read Corneo Spanish. <laughs> There's a pitch. Strike two call. Two strikes and nothing. Nobody on, nobody out. Gary Reed, Reedus. Two homers, four RBI. Reedus, good speed. Swung and he fouled it back. Barry Bonds has had knee surgery, so he's going to be lost to the team for the final three games. It was not a severe surgery. They cleaned out a little cartilage. And in his place, Gary Reedus starting today. He's going to be a free agent, so Jim Leland wants to take a look at him. <laughs> look at all the photographers and writers. Here's the pitch on the way. Her ball outside. Gary Reedus with two homers. One ball, two strikes. I think the president's going to be joining us. One ball, two strikes. A little bit low. Ball two. If he isn't joining us, this press score is going to be a little bit disappointed. <laughs> well, they have a lot of pictures of you and I. Yeah. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Rita Sainter, Gene Lamont, a Chicago area boy, coaching at third base. The pitch on the way. Ball three is high. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. The game 36 minutes late in starting. Three balls, two strikes. He walked to ball four. Rita starts with a base on ball. That will bring up Jose Lee batting 258. Two homers, 49 RBI. Rita's very fast, and I'm not too comfortable with the way Rick Sutcliffe is throwing the ball, unless he's just not loose yet, although he did warm up a long time. He didn't throw the ball very well to Rita. President of the United States just coming up through the stand. There's a pitch foul out of play. Owen won the count.
He sands the jacket now. One strike to nothing. The throw to first, the runner back. Reedus has stolen four bases. He's been caught one time. Leaned a very good hit and run man. You've got a guy at first who can score on a double easily. Lean takes it high. A ball and a strike. Gary Reedus. He has stolen four bases and five tries. strike. Jose Lean out of Puerto Rico. Defies superstition wearing the number 13. He fouls it back. One and two the count. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Just chase the official Cub photographer, Steve It'd be a Green tough outside. Day for Steve Green here, I believe. <laughs> the pitch, a little bit outside. Two balls, two strikes. Come out of here, man. Gonna make you feel an off. Lean with a count of two and two. There goes a runner. Swung and struck out the throw. He is out a double play. And so Lean struck out, and Barry Hill threw Gary Reedus out. A double play on the strikeout. High fastball and perfect throw by Damon Barry Hill. They cut down Reedus for the second time this year. Do you remember in St. Louis? You're, you're plugging the great movie you made, the winning team in which you played the role of Grover Cleveland Alexander, and you stopped into the booth there, and you did two innings on that afternoon. Yes. And you did them very well, as I recall. I was <laughs> glad when you left. Well, thank you. <laughs> There's a strike off. I know I make we make that climb every day. We're going to give you a chance to get your win before <laughs> we talk to you. <laughs> One strike and nothing. Two out. Andy Van Slyke. The pitch. A little bit high. You know, Steve Stone used to pitch for Baltimore. Cy Young Award winner. He's to your right. I'm <laughs> fine. One ball, one strike. Andy Van Slyke hitting 284. The most valuable player on the Pirates who are sure to finish second this year. We've already made out a score sheet for you. You're up to date with two outs in the first inning. All right. Don't worry about it. With When you start next inning, when the Cubs come to bat, everything will be ready for you. The pitch. A bouncing ball. Sandberg has it over the first. No hits, no errors, nobody left. We go in the bottom of the first, no score. All right. You now, when two lovers woo, strap this on. They should say, I love you. I hate you. Are you as turned on as I am? More. Yeah. But on this, you can rely. Mr. Malone has his brains caught in his zipper. Sam and Diane make sparks fly. Some things only get better as time goes by. Cheers. Five times a week. Play it again, Sam. Are they a wonderful couple? Cheers is back, beginning Monday at 6 on Channel 9.
Except in the Chicago Tribune classified ads, where more pets find new homes than in any other newspaper around. So whether you're selling a Dalmatian, or a Bulldog, or any part thereof, maybe you should give us a call. Now our 49 cent original tacos can fill up even the biggest appetite. Save $10 on Converse for basketball. Cons High Tops, $39.94. Sportmark guarantees Converse for less. Sportmark for the way you play. Harry Carey and Steve Saul back at Rigby Field. And it's a, with a great deal of pleasure that I introduce to you the President of the United States taking over the role of a play-by-play -play announcer, Ronald Reagan. At the mic. <laughs> well, Harry, thank you very much. You know, in a few months, I'm going to be out of work, and uh, I thought I might as well audition. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that you've got this job anytime you want it, Mr. President. Right. Webster will lead right. off. Webster, and batting left-handed, of course. Up at the plate, Rick Sutcliffe out on the mound. He's getting a sign from the catcher. Wind up, here comes the pitch. And there goes a hard hit ball out into right field and taken right off the grass for an out. Webster, line hard to Wilson. Wilson. Wilson came in and scooped that up. There's the replay, Mr. President. And he makes quite a play on this. Good effort. Glenn Wilson, an outstanding outfielder, and you can see why. A great rolling catch on the first play. Another angle on Wilson's great catch. That brings and, uh, up Sandberg. Sandberg, second baseman up at the bat. There comes Dunn's pitch. And I think it was outside for the ball. It, it should have been a ball, but he called it a strike. Those umpires are always lousy. <laughs> <laughs> Two strikes and nothing. 2-0. Oh. All right, Dunn's getting a sign again. Wind up in the pitch. A little bit low. And that's low in the ball. 2-1. and one. That's Don Zimmer, the man. Oh, yes, yes. Popeye, we call him. Just met him down there in the dugout a little while ago. Great fellow. Comes the pitch. I, yeah, tell you, I think that was outside to him. Mr. Why? President, here's a young man, good looking enough to be a movie star and maybe someday president, Ryan Sandberg. Well. <laughs> and he fouls one over to the left, around third base. Oh, yes, I met him down there, too. Jim Leland, the pirate manager. What did he say to you? Uh, he was very, very nice. He said he wanted to meet me. And, and there goes a high ball out to left field, left and center field, both going over after it, and center field gets it. A one-hand catch. And that's Dan Slight. Two men out. George Will said, Mr. President, that you've had two very difficult jobs. Calling Cub games as a radio broadcaster and being the President of the United States, which was the toughest for you? Well, since I did the Cubs games by telegraphic report, uh, I don't think that it was as hard as the present job because uh, <laughs> by the time I got the slip of paper, then that told me already what had happened. <laughs> Bob Michael was telling me that uh, how often you tell these tales about uh, doing the uh, Western Union games and how you'd have to uh, uh, improvise ways to... Uh, a, ex not explain the fact that you're having trouble with the wire by uh, having arguments break out and so forth. Oh, I had one bad experience when the wire went dead, tied up, nothing and nothing in the ninth, the Cubs and the Cards, Jurgis at bat. And I already had a ball on the way to the plate when I got the note that the wire had gone dead. So I completed and had him foul it. And then I thought I'd take a chance and because I knew at no time there were a dozen stations broadcasting the same game, and I didn't want to lose the audience, so I had him foul again. And then I had him foul, just miss a home run by a foot. <laughs> and then 
I had two kids get in a fight over the ball that went over back of first base. And um, finally, I'm really beginning to sweat. And then my fellow on the other side of the glass started typing. So I figured it was all right. I got another ball on the way to the plate. And the note he handed me said, Jurgis had popped out on the first ball pitch. Well, we have a walk there. Grace has gotten the base on balls, and here's our big star, Mr. President, Andre Dawson. And you can hear from the crowd, they know he's the big star. Man on first, two out. Dawson at the plate. Here comes the pitch, and it's a hard hit ball. It bounces off the third baseman and into left field. And he's safe at first. And we have our man on third base. Now it's a tough error, but they give Bonilla an error on the play. We'll take a look at it again. Bobby Bonilla charged with the air, his 31st of the year. That's a tough error to get. brings up Raphael Palmero, Mr. President. And he is our young hope in left field. All right, Dawson is over there on first base. I said it, Mr. President. I don't know if I'd like to follow you around and do these games with you always in here because of these lights. This press corps, you're... <laughs> this, this, I guess the movie by a lot didn't feel as hot. The lights in the, yeah, in the movies weren't this hot, were they? No, television lights are the hottest, and I'll tell you something else. Motion picture lights always made you look better. These lights age you about eight years. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, you absolutely look, absolutely look wonderful. You really do. I don't know well, what your secret is, but whatever it is, type it down and let me, so I can live by it. <laughs> All right, Palmero, he's batting left-handed. There's the pitch. And a foul ball. He was trying to get you a souvenir. That was right over our heads. Yes. Don't worry about foul balls, Mr. President. I'll protect you. <laughs> you can come out from behind the counter. Don't believe him. I've yes. seen his hands. You better <laughs> duck. When did they ever take the, the glass out, or is there glass there? In the press box, they have glass. Oh. Well, I know. I, I sat in a couple of times with Pat Flanagan. You remember oh, him? Pat Flanagan, sure. And uh, it was glass, and Pat told me the story of his sound man who decided that the, well he had worked out by the height of the press box and the distance from the plate and all that a foul ball could not hit the arc would not permit it to hit hit the press box and he just finished working out that problem with the ball and the glass dropped in his lap. <laughs> he didn't know that a ball, the foul ball, <laughs> went a little different. Not. Yes, it goes different. It doesn't have a normal curve. Well, we've had a baseball or two up here. Whoops. Fouls the back right. <laughs> Runners first and third, two out. I want, to know about your, I want to know about your suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think these are pretty good? <laughs> Let me see. What kind of... Oh, yeah, no, I, thought, I got a belt on. I'm old-fashioned. <laughs> Oops. Foul's on it. <laughs> you know, usually I wear both the belt and suspenders. That's a suspicious man, though. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Two balls, two strikes. And still men on first and third. And there goes a foul down over second base, and it's a hit out into center field. One run in, men on first and third. There you go. RBI 46 for Rafael Palmero. Well, let's watch it again. If this stands up, this will be the first game-winning RBI for Rafael Palmero this year, and it's up to Rick Sutcliffe to make it stand up. Right. Lean, five, couldn't quite reach that ground ball. 
And this is Vance Law, third baseman at the plate. He's had a great year for the Cubs, Mr. President. He hitting 290, 74 runs batted in. I didn't get the call on that one. I wasn't looking. Was that, that was a ball. ball. A ball. One and oh. He's Runners at the corner. Started. Swing and brought it back, so. Ed Montague is a plate umpire. Nice Irish lad. And there's another uh, grounder. Take it with the shortstop over to second base. And it's one nothing. One run for the Cubs on one hit, one air, two left. At the end of one, the Cubs lead one to nothing. We'll be back with President Reagan in a moment. President Reagan brings the campaign back to Chicago. That story, the latest on the Discovery Shuttle mission, and the rest of the day's news, sports, and weather tonight on the 9 o'clock news. Have you ever noticed how cars mean a little more to some people than they do to others? Nissan has. That's why we build ours the way we do. We understand that a car fulfills a number of human needs. And transportation is only one of them. Nissan, built for the human race. Pick them up. How's everything, boys? Thumbs up. The burger had a homespun quality I found entertaining. I don't exactly agree, Dave. I thought the show was stolen by this saucy French newcomer. How about this Pepsi? I found it refreshing and exciting. Couldn't agree more, Dave. A sparkling performance. That's two thumbs up. Mm. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. You know, Dave, the role of the dinerette waitress, I found her... Convincing. Yet gripping. Wind up and relax with Doskasil Cord Wheel. It reels and unreels up to 150 feet of extension cords, rope, wire, flat hose, and more in seconds. The Dosca Sill Cord Wheel is at Builder Square for just $4.87. Tie up all your loose ends with a little help from Builder Square. We're America's largest home improvement warehouse because the more we sell, the lower the price. The lower the price, the more we sell. President Ronald Reagan's at the microphone as we go on to the top of the second. Bobby Bonilla, Mr. Bobby. President. Bobby Bonilla. Look at the plate. Rick Sutcliffe out there on the mound. Getting his son. Wind up. And the pitch. A little bit low. And a little low. One and low. one count. One and one. Where are you heading from here? Uh, I've got a speech here to make tonight. Uh oh, there's a hard hit ball out into center field, and it is a hit and a single. You were saying between innings that when you had the ticker tape to do a baseball game, you could really elaborate and make it maybe a little more exciting than it was. You see, we've got to tell the truth up here because the people can see exactly what's going on. <laughs> Makes it a different broadcast. <laughs> Yes, that's what television <laughs> did to us. <laughs> they say you can't stop progress, but sometimes progress doesn't necessarily make it better. <laughs> but it has changed it all. Once, when it was just radio, you had to every pitch and every move. Right there's the ball going back to the pitcher. Benio over on first base. Can I visualize you in a year now becoming an anchor man on one of the networks? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be one All way right. to get even with some of them. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Two and no oh count. What do you think of the lights at Wrigley Field? Oh, well, I think it had to happen, and I, I think that the kind of compromise worked out and must have been pleasing to everybody, those that objected at first and... Uh, And it's a hard hit ball out into left center field. A single. And men on first and second. That was Benny DiStefano, the first baseman. And a threat now. Runners, first and second, nobody out. This is Glenn Wilson who made the fine catch in right field, Mr. President. Yeah. 
Sutcliffe not taking any wind up now. And then on first and second. It and feels right about halfway. And up at that, Glenn Wilson, and he's right-handed. Comes the pitch, and it's a foul. Back into the stands, and a little scramble for the ball back there. Yes. We're looking at beautiful Rigby Field, Mr. President, and this is the first of the Fan Appreciation Weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the three final games of the season. This ballpark is unusual in its beauty, but that was Mr. Wrigley's belief that baseball should be an outdoor you know, sort of a picnic atmosphere. Well, he was way ahead of so many of the other owners by allowing radio broadcasts and television broadcasts for free right off the bat. Yeah. Living the mound again. <laughs> I think he made a great producer, director, Arnie. <laughs> As and that's a ground ball taken by second over to short for out. And I believe it's double play. Double play. Four, six, three. Two out. Well turned over by Ryan Sandberg and Angel Salazar. Salazar in the lineup again. Sean Dunstan still nursing a little bruise. Good pivot by Salazar around the bag. And you can see DeStefano can't get a piece of him on the pivot. And we'll watch it again. Inside out swing by Wilson. Good solid double play by the Cubs. Tom Prince, rookie catcher, will be the hitter. is out of our our neck of the woods. He's from Kankakee, Illinois. Two out, a runner at third. Rigby Field this afternoon. Here comes the pitch. And it's a strike. Swinging. <laughs> Arnie says it's the first time we've had two guys in the booth with a tie the entire season. <laughs> he thinks you're adding a little class to the broadcast. You should have seen the way that. I dressed when I was broadcasting. <laughs> oh. That's strike two. Two and two. You're going to address the uh, mercantile All right. tonight, huh? Yeah. And another strike, swinging and it's out. And that retires the side. Three out and the man dies on third base. Mr. President, thank you very much. Well, I know I have to move along now. The job I presently have is calling me. <laughs> <laughs> but not good, for long. Good to see you. Well, good to yeah. see you, and thank you for letting me sit in here and do this. Thank you for coming thank in. It's been a pleasure. Tell him, yes. tell him I got a lot of money in that market deal. Tell him to... Make me some dough down there, will you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, thank you all. We go into the bottom of the uh, second. One, two, three, four. He's the curly of the 80s. The King Kong of comedy. The wild and woolly bull. Commence lip lock. I think we've been shaving this a little too close. Follow me, kids. Bull and 
Night Court, beginning Monday at 6.30 on Channel 9. All airplanes are created equal, built by the same people. But after they're built, something happens. People don't think of all airlines in the same way. Just look at all the business flyers that have flown with us over the years. Maybe it's that we fly to more business centers. Or maybe it's how we fly to more business centers. United. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. When the country was young, we were there, sharing the vision. And today, when the vision is bigger, we're still here. Doors and minds open, service is expanded. For your home, for your kids, for all your dreams. We're American Savings Institutions, federally insured, personally involved, your partners in the American dream. A message from CAFI, the Chicago Land Association of Savings Institutions. Well, Mr. President, I, I tried all my salesmanship. I tried to get you to stay here another inning, but you convinced me you got to move along. Yeah, I have to. Yet, yeah, try me again, say, January 21st. <laughs> Good to see you. Well, thank Thanks you for letting me for sit in here and even take a hand. It thank felt like you. old times. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Damon Berryhill with a hard shot that Benny DiStefano puts away. And one out in the second inning. Cubs on top, one to nothing. Angel Salazar, hitting 264, no homers, one RBI. You mean it's just you again? <laughs> Goodbye, fellas. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Nice of you to come here. <laughs> just you and I, Harry. I can't believe they're all leaving. I thought they came here to see us, and there they go. I'm going to take this tie off now. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. A bouncing ball to the shortstop. For me, throws Salazar out. That brings up Rick Sutcliffe. Two out, nobody on. Harry, the president even had the terminology down. He said... They're out of the inning, and the man dies at third. Let me tell you, you could tell he was raised in, in the radio day because his, uh, his modus operandi was that of a radio play-by-play -play guy. Instead of referring to the picture. Sutcliffe. Two out, nobody on. There's a fly ball will be called. Whoa! It gets away from Reeders. And there's Sutcliffe trotting down to second base. An air on Reeders. The ball was well hit, but he should have caught it. He dropped it for a two-base error. Second error of the year for Gary Reeders. He's not used to playing left field in this park. He played a little center field here when he was with Cincinnati. The ball takes off on him. He had it measured. It hits off his glove, and he is charged with a two-base error as Sutcliffe chugs into second. Watch it again as he goes back. He thinks he's got this ball, and at the last instant, it hits the thumb of his glove. One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Here's Webster. A strike call. Mike Dunn on the hill, the Peoria boy out of Bradley University. Out of Pete Van Aken country. A little bit outside, and the count is evened up. You know, Dunn doesn't seem as fast as he did last year. Harry, he's really struggled this year. The ERA just over four. Jim Leland said he thinks he hasn't been quite as aggressive as he'd like him to be. Wild one gets away from the catcher, Tom Prince. A wild pitch. They have a runner at third with two outs. What I've noticed, Harry, is he's throwing a few more split-finger fastballs than I'm used to Mike Dunn throwing. Now, here's an example of one. The 12th wild pitch of the year for Dunn. You throw a lot of split-finger fastballs, and it's going to take something off your natural fastball. And I think that might have happened. Sometimes you try to come up with a trick pitch, and it hurts what you already have. Two balls and the strike.
Sutcliffe, who stole earlier. There's a bunt. Hey, that run's going to score. And Webster drives in a run with a safe bunt that he dragged past the mound towards second base. The turning point to that play, if Dunn reaches it, it's an easy out. But he couldn't. And it becomes a hit on the run. Good effort by Mitch Webster. RBI number 38 will isolate on Rick. Now he's got illusions of stealing home again. Now when he sees the bunt down with two outs, there's nothing to wait for. And Webster, with good speed, does get it by Dunn. So oh, it's two to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Here's Ryan Sandberg now. There goes the... Press score. And with them leaving the ballpark, the president cannot be too far behind.